right. I'm also ready for this, yes, pussy. This is gonna be fun. Yeah. Huge, huge shouts to Sadistic Mystic for getting this set up. He did a lot of work in getting this streamlined and getting it set up. I am honestly here just um, a bot, <laughs> just streaming his tests. Like, he definitely was the one in charge of this getting everything set up. All right. So, uh, what we're going to be going over today is the newly discovered rollout and disguise glitch. So, this was originally discovered um, by a person on Twitter that I just had up. And, oh, yep. Hirata Hiroto. Um, they have a very <laughs> bizarre um, Twitter profile, um, and they really like Machamp, it appears. Um, but they posted a video um, on the 14th talking about uh, this glitch. So if um, rollout is used into disguise, then for some reason um, the rollout multiplier is stored in some way. Uh, there's more details on this in the uh, Battle Mechanics research thread on Smogon. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not uh, entirely familiar with it. I just know the implications of it are uh, that you can get up to a 32 times damage multiplier. Uh, some examples of that that um, Hirata Hiroto showed was a level 1 Geodude okoing a level 100 Gyarados. So that was pretty funny. <laughs> um, he also did something with a, a Cherum okoing a Mega Metagross um, and related things. So. Um, Sadistic Mystic is also a researcher on Smogon. Um, he's not formally badged, although uh, honestly, I think with the work that he does, he probably should be. Um, it's just that he doesn't, I, I don't know, he probably just doesn't have like, like video proof like I do, um, which makes it a little more easier to show off, I suppose. But anyway, Sadistic Mystic is a, a, a really fantastic researcher um, and he definitely knows his stuff, so um, he helped. All right, no, he, he basically set up this test in its entirety, and we are going to go ahead and test it. So what we're testing is um, the 32 times damage multiplier is insane. Um, it actually allows you to bypass what we would consider to be um, in computing the size, uh, the maximum size of the int value. So if you're familiar with um, computing at all, um, typically one way you can store numbers as integers um, is with um, a, a certain number of bits associated to that particular um, integer. Um, typically this uh, caps out at around a little over 2 billion. Um, it has a very specific number. It's two, If I recall correctly, I believe it's 2 to the 31 minus 1. Um, yeah, it's 2 to the 31 minus 1. Um, that's the uh, maximum size of an integer value. So if Pokemon is storing their damage in this way, um, then a couple things could happen. Um, the first thing is that it could potentially roll around and create a negative damage. Um, negative damage would be very bizarre. Um, I don't really know what would happen if we had negative damage. Um, something would probably go wrong. Um, I, I imagine we'd probably have a game crash if there's negative damage, but Pokemon's usually smart enough and it would have some sort of error handling for that. So um, it could do zero damage, or what's more expected, um, what it does with speed at least, is that it might loop the damage around. So if you hit upwards of two billion so damage, it might loop around to a smaller number. So for example, um, the, uh, the limit is um, 2,147,483,647. So if you hit like 649 or something like that, then your 2 billion damage attack or something like that would do approximately 2 damage. And that would be really funny and I would laugh and laugh. So I will go ahead and send the challenge to Mystic. We'll get this going. Oh, he had already sent me the challenge. I messed up. <laughs> All right. So there are um, obviously some complications with this. Um, notably with how the damage formula changed modifiers, we are assuming the Gen 5 damage formula here, which is typically a safe assumption. It's what the damage calculators go by. It's what Showdown goes by. Um, it's about what's most verified by the community. Uh, the damage formula tends to stay the same after, or se since Gen 5, the damage formula has tended to stay the same has tended to stay the same so um, what we're going to do is we're just going to take those assumptions and we're going to see um, if we can hit a number just above that um, 2 billion 
50 million ish mark. Um, so we're going to start off with testing this with, um, I believe we're going to do the power trip variation first. Let me ask it. He, which way he wants to do it first. Would you like to do the power trip or bolt strike variation first? So we'll see what he says about that. And like I said, he's prepared the test pretty well in advance, so um, he knows what's going on here. So let's load up this one. Oh shoot! I chose normal battle. I should have chose unre I should have chose unrestricted. I messed up. I messed up. Yeah, because if you choose a normal battle, it'll all level everything to level 50, and we obviously can't have that, because our tests are dependent on having really high attack stats. And level 100 Pokemon tend to have higher attack than their non-level 100 counterparts. So we'll do that again. By the way, is my um is my voice to uh, background uh, music ratio pretty good? Can you like hear the music, but it is not like overpowering and all those things? I have no idea. I need to find. I need to, like get some default settings or something like that set up. That would probably be helpful. quite excited for this. Ratio is fine? Okay, excellent. Alright, so this time I need to not like auto click <laughs> through my stuff and actually think. So we want to do uh, no restrictions. Well, I'll have to play the 100. Okay. So I suppose that, uh, assuming he's got everything ready to go, then I, I guess I'll figure out really quickly which one. I, I haven't heard back from uh, Sadistic Mystic yet. Um, which one he wants to do first. We have two variations. Um, I think he wanted to do the Power Trip one first, so I think we'll just go ahead and just assume that. Yeah, I'm excited for this a lot. I think Dragon Whale and uh, um, the Kata Hukoto will be... Um, Happy to see this. Okay, so this looks like power trip variation. Yeah, because nothing on his team does bolt strike. Okay. So we are going to do this. So we have a script set up. So I need to make sure I follow this carefully. So we need to lead Hoopa and Smeargle. So what we're essentially doing, um, as a relative, uh, well, actually, you'll. you'll I'll, I'll almost find out as you, as you will. Um, he, sh he showed me a uh, showdown replay of what we're doing. Um, so he's gotten this um, off the ground past theory, but um, it's uh, still pretty complicated. But what we're essentially doing is we're setting up this Pikachu to be really, really strong. <laughs> So as you can see, this uh, Hoopa has 309 attack, and we're going to use Power Split on the Pikachu, and we're going to be doing this a couple of times. Uh, we need to um, get these things manipulated or around the way that we need them to, but it's going to be um, in a similar way like that. We're going to use Swagger and Power Split onto the Pikachu. So for those who are unfamiliar, Power Split will swap the actual stats, uh, or not swap, but will average the actual stats of those uh, attack and special attack stats. Um, it's very similar to Guard Split, if you're familiar with those mechanics from uh, Chansey teams in uh, 2018 and 2017. Uh, we have boost up this Pikachu. It's a female Pikachu. Black Sludge. 
Next up, I'm going to skill swap the Tapu Fini, which is switching out for an Azumarill. And Swagger on the So I'm going to take away the huge power from the Azumarill coming in, and we're going to pass that to the Pikachu. Because that's pretty helpful. The Pikachu has begun to use rollout. It already has a sizable amount of attack, so... Yeah, it's gonna already do some damage. The swagger of the Pikachu. So now I'm going to skill swap the huge power onto the Pikachu, because it needs more damage right now. Next up, we will also swagger the Pikachu as well. So Pikachu, assuming the Swagger hits, uh, I, I believe it's it should be fairly accurate. He gave it the um, accuracy boosting um, item, so that will be helpful for us. Um, but it should boost Pikachu's attack even further. Alright, Roa also connects, so that's good. Just tail whip. Shake his booty at the Smeagol. Swagger. Following this, I will bring the Mimikyu um, for Disguise so we can uh, utilize that. Black Sludge. Alright. So now, at this point, um, uh, Sadistic Mystics needs a bit of time to get his thing set up, so. I'm just kind of throwing stats moves at him in misty terrain. So this is where the glitch occurs, where rollout's uh, damage is going to be uh, stored in some way. Um, it increments the, the counter in an incorrect way. Um, basically, it increments the damage counter, but doesn't increment the I have used rollout this many times counter. So uh, that's essentially what the glitch comes down to. Uh, so next up, I'm going to start. Let's turn five, yep. So I want to use Little Wisp and Speed Swap onto the Pikachu. So the thing opts to use Defog. Uh, notably, it does not display the but it failed message. I'm pretty sure that was wrong on the uh, test replay on Showdown, which is not surprising. They, they, they're they weird with their but it failed messages. Uh, they need to get their act together, honestly, um, with wrapping those up. But that's also my fault. I kind of promised that I would make this big list of but it failed and uh, haven't done that. All right, gravity's back to normal. All right, so now, um, don't forget that this Miracle was level one, so this Pikachu, um, now has an absurdly low speed set, and that's helpful for us in um, trying to set up the appropriate end game. So I'm going to go ahead and use Will Wisp onto Pikachu. Right? Yep, so I'm using Will Wisp on Pikachu, and I'm going to use a Reflect type on the Tapu Fini. The Tapu Fini is going to switch out for Pangoro. So now Smeargle has acquired um, Pangoro's typing. Will was thankfully hits. <laughs> Pika opts to roll out and it hits the Mimikyu. Roll out will always hit the um, opposing side in a double battle. So what I mean by that is it would always hit my left slot because it's in Sadistic Mystic's right slot. So now I will send in Mew. So now my Mew is going to use Transform on my Smeargle. So what this will do is this will copy the Smeargle's defenses, of course, but it won't copy the HP, and that'll be uh, useful for us because that will give this Mew really low H. It'll give this Mew really low defenses while retaining a really high HP stat. Um, by using this, this will 
um, help us test better whether or not the overflow is occurring. Um, because we can uh, pretty reliably, we have a, a good damage range. I believe a Statistic Mystic uh, locked it down to about a range of 100, 200 or so um, from the damage rolls um, that he was able to reduce it down to, which in my opinion is uh, really well done uh, mathematically. Uh, but now we are going to go ahead and transform, and I'm also going to speed swap the Mew. The speed swap on the Mew doesn't do anything for us. Um, this is just to waste time, essentially. Because the Mew and the um, Smeargle Mew um, now have the same stats, so we're just... Uh, th this is a, a null turn. Actually, the, it should have um, swapped the Pikachu stat, but uh, the, the speed is not ultimately relevant for this. The Pangoro opts to use Power Trip, and Pikachu uses Mimic. Um, note that these moves on Pikachu are from the... Um, uh, they have to be from a Generation 3 game. Um, I believe it knows Mimic, Defense Curl... Um, what's the other ones that it needs? It needs Mimic, Defense Curl, Charge, and some other move. Um, uh, we'll probably see it later because I was just lazy and didn't look it up. Okay, if I recall correctly, then I just need to double speed swap again. Uh, he continues to do more setup. So, more speed swaps. Oh, you know what would be useful? I, I could show off that um, because we have used Reflect Type um, and we've transformed, um, the type is retained throughout all of that, um, which I think is quite interesting. So I'll show you on the bottom screen that we can check and verify that. Pikachu shakes its tail. All right. So that Smeargle is about ready to die. I hope it doesn't. I don't know if that was part of the plan or not. Um, so you can see here on the bottom, you see how it says it's dark and fighting type? I think that's kind of cool. And also, um, but it knows that it's own tempo and stuff like that, so I think that's cool. Yeah, same with up this other Smeargle. It knows that it's fighting in dark type. Um, Sadistic Mystic, if he tapped on the bottom screen, would also be able to um, see that information. Um, and now, I believe I instruct, I believe I double instruct on Cherim. I am double struck on Cherim this turn. Okay, I trust his notes, so I'm going to double instruct Cherim. And whatever Cherim is doing is going to happen a lot of times. <laughs> ah, it's using Tickle. Okay, that makes sense. So we're lowering this Smeargle's defense either even further by opting to go for instruct. Uh, we will force the Tickle to hit the um, Mew Smeargle even more times. Um, this is guaranteed, by the way, to always hit the Smeargle because of how instruct mechanics work. If you instruct, you always, if you instruct a single target move, it always targets the same slot that it was previously. So now both Smeargle. The Pikachu opts for another defense curl. Um, the defense curl at this point doesn't mean anything. Um, the rollout, the 32 times multiplier, um, stays until the next attack is used, which in my opinion is really bizarre. But um, that, that 32 times damage, I think it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny actually to me. Um, so now, next up, I uh, double instruct the Pikachu, which will presumably go for some more attacks. So we're going to instruct the Pikachu. So now the Cherim opts to set up Sunny Day. On this final turn, what the Cherim will do is we'll go for Helping Hand, and we will instruct the Helping Hands multiple times. Um, this will uh, get, allow multiple Helping Hand boosts to stack, which essentially gives us uh, like old triple battles, um, which is uh, kind of useful for stacking damage um, in ways other than like using Me First, because sometimes Me First is really picky with what um, attacks it's uh, useful for. So now Smeargle Mew. And Smeargle Smeargle. Increase this boy even further. We're doing this to increase the damage of Power Trip, by the way. If that was not apparent yet. Alright. And... Next up, this is the final turn. So we will see on this turn what happens. I'm going to instruct the Cherim with my new Smeargle, and I'm going to use a uh, speed swap on my own Mew, and we're going to see what happens. If this Mew faints, 
then damage, if it overflows, it handles it in a good way. If um, it does like zero damage, then something is really screwy. If it okos, then it's probably not stored as an integer, or at least a 32-bit um, signed integer. Um, so, yeah, we're gonna see what happens. It's exciting. The cherry mops for helping hand. My Muse Miracle will also opt for a helping hand. Uh, looks like that one went first, but it should be fine. See, as you can see, this instruct. And this helping hand boost counts as a second helping hand boost, so it'll be 1.5 times 1.5. So this Pikachu already has all of these multipliers ready to go. Let's see how much this Pyro Curve does. 404, down to 330, it overflows! It overflows! It overflows, okay. So the damage overflows. Holy crap, all right, that's huge. Okay, so the damage actually overflows. Damage overflows. Um, so we did um, we did uh, 404 minus 330, um, 74 actual, 74 actual damage. So I predict that that actually did. Um, let's see here. Plus damage, damage plus 74. Um, so I predict that th that that attack actually did two billion one hundred and forty-seven million four hundred eighty-three thousand seven hundred twenty-one damage, but that overflowed to seventy-four. So um, that's huge. What that means is um, not only does so that means the theoretical max damage would be the max size of an int, um, but it also means we could we should be able to theoretically overflow to zero damage. I don't know if we need to go to um, to max int plus one, or if we would just go to max int, um, we should just go because um, we should. Uh, it should it should be max int minus. Yeah. Okay. So that's cool. Um, which also means that the theoretical max damage proposed by Dragon Whale um, won't work because of because of that. Yeah. So actually, we should be able to. Um, I don't I don't know what moves he's locked in, but. Um, I, I, he might have just forfeited. Yeah, okay, that's fine. So we, um, so this this is huge, which means uh, the damage in Pokemon has a cap. Um, max int plus one. See, that's why I think it, I think it would be as well. So if you went to max int plus one, then you should do zero damage. So it's it's clearly not um, it, it's not overflowing to an, uh, a negative number, which is expected. It didn't crash. That's what I mean. Pokemon has enough error checking that that would happen. So I'm gonna save that battle video. That might be um, useful to. Does the attack only do slightly more than... Yeah, yeah, it does. It should be the size of max int, and then that one did particular in particular 74, so... So it should do... Yeah, Team Rocket Elite, it should do this much. So this is what I expect size to be. Yeah, 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 that, exactly. Yeah, that, that's ma I believe that's the size of max int. It's two to, two to raised to the 31 minus one. Um, so, overflow to zero. Yeah, we, we could overflow to zero. Um, I don't have a setup ready for that. Why'd you let Mew be dark fighting? I don't know. That was just <laughs> that was just the way he had it set up. I'm assuming um, because it quad resist. Um, there was he had to get the multipliers to um, stack in a certain way. Um, he couldn't always he couldn't just do positive um, modifiers. Also, shouldn't the level involve change of damage calculations? Yes, it should. Um, but they were both level 100 there, so. That, that would be uh, not impactful. Yeah, the level involved would change the damage calculation, Ezreal, but it's um, irrelevant to the thing that we're testing here, which is um, the actual damage at the end. The level is used in the damage calculator as a modif or damage calculation as a modifier, so um, it will read in the level, so a Pokemon will um, do more damage based on its level. Um, I believe it does not do less damage based on its target level, but um, I'd have to double check that. Um, I should know that off the top of my head. I'm a damage calculator guy. But, um, yeah, so um, that was just the way that Sadistic Mystic um, had the modifier set up. So um, really all it's left to do at this point would be to do the math and prove the results. Um, I'll ask him what he wants to do at this point. I, th I think this is enough. Um, do you want to do anything else? We could do the whole strike test. Also. 
So I'm asking um, him if he wants. To, if we had, we had a. Yeah, yeah. It, sh it shouldn't matter. Um, unless it got changed. But in any case, we're both level 100 here, so that would be um, irrelevant. Yeah, it, it should only be level of your own Pokemon. From when I studied Gym Formula. Yeah, I've got, I've got a, um, I've got a short guide I wrote myself on it. But um, here, let me, let me go ahead and link that. The um, black and white damage formula guide. There you go. So what I'm, what I'm really curious about is I'm trying to figure out. So, um, I honestly don't know where the rollout damage multiplier is being stored at because I assumed that moves with variable base power. Um, all I'm saying is you might not have been at the max. No, no, no. This wasn't the theoretical max damage. Um, what I, this is definitely though. This is super duper high. Don't forget this was a level 100 Smeargle copying. Uh, level one. Um, this was level 100 Smeargle copying, or level 100 Mew copying level one Smeargle stats at like minus six or anything like that. We don't know precisely where the overflow number might be. That is true. We technically don't know. Um, but um, like I said, we can um, do the math and we can uh, demonstrate the uh, damage rolls. So we are going to go ahead and do the bolt strike test, um, just to, I guess, confirm and show it off. So. Um, Dragon Whale's theoretical max damage has been usurped, or usurped, basically. So, uh, luckily, I get to use the same team. He designed it that well. Uh, I don't even have to change anything. <laughs> this is exciting. But yeah, the overflow number might potentially be. It might be at the size of max int. It might be at uh, max int. It might be at max int minus one or something like that. Like that is something that could be um, a variable. But uh, um, I didn't actually double check Statistic Mystic's math, but I trust him um, based on uh, like what he showed me. It sounded like he had done a lot of work into it, um, and I can double check it. So, uh, but I'll probably let him post and take the credit for this since he, he basically uh, wrote this up. Um, I can do I'll double check his math just to make sure that he did it right. But um, I know how to do a I know how to do manual damage calculation. It just would take a long time for something like this. So. Let's go ahead and do both strike. So let's go ahead and see what we got. That's what we want to do. Uh, Spear going in. This time we got Zekrom. Zekrom's scary. Imagine if Zekrom was good. I mean, it is a good Pokemon. It gets like Tailwind and like Bolt Strike, and you can use it with like Peppa Coco and deal like super huge damage. I wonder how much uh, Z Bolt Strike and Terrain does to Kyogre through Protect. Like, it shouldn't do that much, but it should do a chunk. I'd imagine it, it probably would do half, honestly. Not like that matters. I mean, if a Z was doing half, it's not particularly relevant. Alright, so let's see here. All the directions. The bolt strike variation. So we're just going to basically test this again. So yeah, this is cool. Uh, I always enjoy uh, helping to discover these types of things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna. So the beginning looks like is going to be very similar. So and as you can see, the Pikachu here is a different attack stat as its base. Oh yeah, I guess it probably would be helpful to prove that I'm actually the stats that these say they are. Um, you can see this is 309. And I'm sure his is 169. We, we made sure that that information is right. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and power split Pikachu and swagger the Pikachu. Gravity. You don't understand the gravity of this situation. Next up, we'll do a similar thing. Well, we'll take the um, Azumarill's huge power that's coming in and also swagger the Pikachu once more.
Following this, we will pass the um, skill, the huge power rather, but skill swap onto the Pikachu again, and swagger the Pikachu once more in order to get it to its maximum stage of attack. So now Pikachu is all wet, because he has been soaked. Alright, Hoop is down, so I'm going to bring in the Mimikyu. Just going to waste a few turns by using Will-O-Wisps and Swagger into Pikachu. Again, the rollout breaking the skies here is what ends up triggering this times 32 damage, uh, if you will, glitch. The attack won't go any higher. So let's see here. Next up, I'm going to use Will O Wisp on the Pikachu once more. And I'm going to give Pikachu again the slow level 1 cerebral speed. So if any opts for a defog, the reason that um, the defog is used here on Pikachu is just to decrease its accuracy. Or, sorry, to decrease its evasion in order for um, Willowis to be able to hit in subsequent turns. Because it's always nice when your attacks hit when you're trying to do big tests like this. Following this, I will use another Will-O-Wisp into Pikachu. I shouldn't be able to get this off. I hope that was how he had it written up. Okay. I mean, it worked before, so I, I trust he knows what he's doing here. So I'll use Will-O-Wisp and the uh, Reflect type into Tapu Fini. Tapu Fini is going to switch out here into Zekrom, so we are going to copy Zekrom's typing. Zekrom, being a Dragon Electric type, will quad resist Bolt Strike. Oh, I'm faster, right, because I speed swap the, the speeds. I'm bad. If I could pay attention for more than three seconds, that would be helpful. <laughs> Alright, so roll out knocks out the Mimikyu. Next up, we will send in Mew. So now we are going to transform into our Smeargle once more, and just self-speed swap to waste a turn. That is a Fusion Bolt and a crit. <laughs> oh no! Um... <laughs> I don't think that was part of the plan. Oops. Uh, uh, oops. <laughs> that did a lot of damage. Okay, I, I'm pretty sure that's not part of the plan. So I think uh, <laughs> uh, either his Zekrom is too strong or, or he, he messed something up with his EVs. Yeah, we, uh, meet. Yeah, I don't think this is right. Uh, RIP. <laughs> oh well. Um, well. Uh, no, yeah, that was, that was a mistake. Okay. So I don't know if that was a damage roll or if that was you know, something else. I'll, I'll check his notes on that, see if he had any, like, uh, this one's a little more finicky to work with. There's a possible 25% paralysis on the first bull strike. Uh, 3.5 set, the final bolt strike goes for a miss. Yeah, 
Okay, so we just we kind of got unlucky there. Uh, it's supposed to be level 50. Oh, it was supposed to be uh, level 50. Is that Grom? Okay. Um, yeah. It would probably be helpful. Um, so, do you want to... Let's. I'll ask him. Do you want to go ahead and fix it? Oh, got to entertain the stream in the meantime. Make a happy Twitter Twitter post about this. So. Yeah, I think he's gonna go ahead and see if he can um, get his correct Zekrom. So we will. Uh, take a s short break until that's around. I am not going anywhere though, so I'm just gonna go ahead and read the comments and see, and see what's going on. Let's see here. Team Rocket Elite, have you tried just have you tried doing just under the max int damage? Um, well, if we did do that, um, then we would have a problem of how would we know how much damage we actually did? Because I don't think you can hack an HP stat that high, like even in theory. Um, I, I don't know what you could hack it to, that would be, but I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be higher than Maxim, so that would be a problem. So, um, if we did that, then what we would be able to do is we could say that it did under that amount of damage. That's that's all we could, that's all we could really say. We could say that um, it is not this that is the boundary. Oh, we see the damage through Protect? Oh, it does like, it's like 60%, holy crap, that's a lot. Oh wow, we can actually Oko 4 HP in terrain. <laughs> that's funny. Is it because Disguise has 0 HP? Yeah, I think that's a really good theory, um, CS Blissey. Uh, that, that would make a lot of sense to me. Um, if it did have 0 HP, then uh, it somehow counted it as having updated it, but not really. Um, I don't think it's possible to have a substitute with 0 HP at any point in time, if I recall. I think it always has to have HP, because if you have 1 HP left, so that's why Substitute in Disguise, or that's why Substitute would be distinct from Disguise in this case, but yeah. Let's see here. I was wondering if the Pokemon still blows up or still survives for some reason. Yeah, if it wasn't, if like two, if the max int wasn't the actual limit, which would be um, bizarre, I don't really know. Yeah, like Flyer Butts in Disguise does do re zero recoil, exactly. So if the Pokemon would faint, if it was slightly underneath there, then it would be like what Ezreal's saying, where it could potentially be a variable amount of damage. So, like, if... Um, for example, if it did exactly 2 billion, if it did exactly 2 billion damage, um, like, that was the cap, and then it overflowed. 74 was actually lower than I was anticipating on Power Trip. It overflowed at the spot. I think it did. I had pegged for 170 to 201. Okay, so we'll have to double-check your map on that. It definitely overflowed though, which is um, like I think I think that's pretty confident. Like it was way too high of damage um, for it to not have overflowed. So at least we've got that. So we'll just have to double check the math on like where it came up in the damage formula. Um, that could have to do with um, I was I was talking with Sadistic Mystic about um, the implications of where the rollout modifier is actually being applied in the damage formula, because as I said, I thought it would be applied as a like a move with variable base power beforehand. Max time it just seems like a strange point to overflow. But why would it be a strange point to overflow? Um, if it doesn't know any better than, like, that, that seems like a really high damage. Like, keep completely just keeping, well, we, we're assuming an unsigned in here. Because damage could never be negative. So if they just made it unsigned, then it shouldn't um, loop over that. I'm not especially familiar, I'll admit, um, with what happens to numbers after you try to overflow. So, um, unsigned, yeah, unsigned 32-bit is is 4 billion, which is interesting because it's clearly not unsigned 32, right? Um, what if it's unsigned 6, um, what's, um, what would be the highest unsigned for that? It should be... It's not 2 to the 16. That's too low. Yeah. What would be what would be the... Um, let's see. Let's see here. Check, check. Yeah. 
what you're saying is right. Why would the number overflow in any case? Well, if it didn't overflow on um, Ezreal, then it would the game wouldn't know what to do. Um, that's because of how um, numbers are stored in computers. Um, they only have certain amounts of bits assigned to them. Um, so they would have a limit of some sort as to the highest number they could store. Yeah, I saw it, CS Pussy. <laughs> um, so for example, if I only had um, two bits available to store a number, unsigned, 30, un unsigned 32 can be only... Be yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what Jimmy said there is correct. Yeah, including zero, the reason why it's not um, from like, the, it looks like the same number of negative to positive is because it includes zero. Yeah, that, that's, that's sign 32. So what would, what would un, if it was unsigned, um, um, what would you need it, how many bits would it need to take in order to hit that two billion number? It would be, um, yeah, that's what, that's what unsigned, that's what an unsigned 32 would be. But what would, um, hmm. well, see, if it was, if it was hitting that high, then it, it wouldn't, okay, so I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of off by one errors, which would be relevant for us. Um, later on, but yeah, let's just go ahead and load up this. So we'll go, we'll go ahead and test it again with the bolt strike and get another um, round of data. This should be helpful for um, having extra uh, data available to us. So we'll just, I believe we lead like this, right? Yeah, yeah I'm going to check my notes. Yep. Okay. And it wouldn't make much sense for them to use only um, 31 bits. Like an unsigned 31 bit integer, what doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I want to do the math after this and see um, what our damage calculations are looking like here. Also, are we doing... Okay, no, that should be good. Okay. So, power split. Swagger. Nevertheless, this is exciting. It's, it's clearly overflowing in some sense. setting this up again, preferably with um, 10 times less uh, Zekrom's Okoing the Pikachu. <laughs> yes, Sadistic Mystic in, in general, I'll tell you guys a little bit about him. So my first interaction with Sadistic Mystic um, was when he described the Arceus form uh, bluff. That was... Uh, wait, did I mess up? No, I didn't mess up. Okay. No, did I mess up? No, I should be good. Okay. So my first interaction with Sadistic Mystic was the Arceus um, form bluff bitch. Um, so basically, if you trade an Arceus holding a Z-Crystal, um, it does not turn off the visual effects for its Z-Crystal-ish thing. So like, for example, if you trade an Arceus holding the Fairy MZ, 
Um, then the Ferium, the um, Fairy type Arceus, you can still see that. So uh, that looks pretty funny. <laughs> but it doesn't require to hold that um, Z crystal. And if you like give it a, a new item, or I, I believe it could only be a normal type. Um, or it, it's some, yeah, it had to be a normal type, um, else it's form reset. Um, so you could basically um, bluff one Arceus form as another. Uh, and it actually works just fine. Um, it behaves exactly like the Hackmon's behavior in local battles. And so I did a whole big spiel about this. Um, I wrote up a script. I, I record footage of everything. And then I go to test it online so I can record it for uh, my Mechanics Monday. And then it doesn't work. And I'm just like, oh. Um, and uh, so apparently the game doesn't like it when you have a, a Z, an RCS with a different type than the Z Crystal or plate that's holding. Suffice to say, so uh, yeah, that was disappointing. <laughs> and so I reported back on that. I'm just like, yeah, it doesn't work if you try it online. And so that was annoying. I think that was like the last mechanics Monday I tried to make. <laughs> I need to make more mechanics Monday. Ooh, we got Dark Price team playing right now. All right. up to the turn where I'm going to go ahead and pass the level 1 Smeargle's low speed to the Pikachu. When Sun and Moon um, first came out, I was really hoping that when you switched um, Mimikyu in and out after losing its disguise, it would like retain the disguise. Um, I, I mean, obviously that would be really broken if you could just like switch Mimikyu in and out. But it wouldn't be as broken in doubles, but uh, it kind of would still be broken. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I thought it was really funny um, when it didn't do that. I'm just like, oh man, I was hoping this guy's going to be like a super broken ability. It's still a really good ability, but it's not broken. Now we're going to Will-O-Wisp the Pikachu and go for a Reflect type. I'll be Zekrom coming in. Had to do the fog, and then hopefully roll out connects. Yay! Right, we'll send in Mew, and we will transform in self speed swap. Self speed swap, self speed swap to waste a turn. So now the Zekrom is level 50, so it should do considerably less damage with its big dragon electric move. Well, it's just an electric type attack, but it is a big dragon. They swap the speed. Speed swap's a fun move. Fusion Bolt, yeah, Pikachu takes that a lot nicely. And mimics the fusion. Why is it mimicking Fusion Bolt? I thought this test was with Bolt Strike. Perhaps he uh, modified the, uh, the test in some way. I think he just level 95 now. Hmm. Oh no, okay. So, next up. I just speed swap each other. Next up, we'll use Cherim's uh, 
tickle after instructing it a few times. And we'll get this set up. Okay. Got our defense curl. So we're going to use double instruct on Cherum. Instruct is a weird move. <laughs> Did you know that you can't use Instruct on uh, a move that causes another move, like Nature Power? So you can't, like, um, read Tepa Coco and, uh, or Guru and go for a Nature Power and Instruct on it. It doesn't work. Alright, so speed swap targeting one another. Now the Pikachu ups for charge, which will boost its following uh, electric type attack. But I thought this was supposed to be Bolt Strike, so uh, unless he changed it in the middle, um, this is kind of weird, but that's okay. Um, so now I go for Instruct. Launch the Charm. So we're going to do our helping hand, double helping hand trick again. And we'll see if. My Mew is able to survive this time. It's interesting because Fusion Bolt's um, lesser base power, if, if this is, was a mistake, which I don't think it is, um, uh, would actually cause the, if this Mew to get O code. If that is the case, but I, I don't know. We'll find out. Up hand, up hand, flower gift. Let's see what happens here. Fusion Bolt. I love this animation, by the way. I think it looks so cool. Okay, so Smeagol died to that. There's a crit! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh no! It was a crit! You gotta be kidding me! <laughs> it was a crit! Oh man! It was a critical hit though. It was a crit. Ah, uh, I, I don't know if that affected his his stuff or not. So, does that impact? Oh, impact it it would have KO'd anyway. Doesn't overflow. Okay. So, um, he said that fusion bolt example shouldn't have overflowed. So I don't really know what was going on with that one, but he knows um, this is footage for him. So. Uh, yeah. Um, I think that's all the tests we're gonna do. I don't think there's any point in testing a theoretical max damage from Dragon Whale since um, it's clearly overflowing in some way or another, uh, regardless of where it's actually overflowing at. It would be very difficult to actually tell. Um, we'd actually be able to. Um, well, actually, I, su I suppose that depends on your definition of theoretical max damage. If like that overflow like counts or not. Like, for example, speed always overflows. Um, once you hit 8,191, if you go beyond that, then it overflows. So, do you count, like, a speed of 10,000 as 8,191? Or, like, is greater than 8,191, even though the game doesn't count as that? I don't really know. Yeah, Fusion Bolt is not Bolt Strike. Fusion Bolt is not Bolt Strike, so. 
Uh, basically, what that. What, so, yeah. Lucky Chan on Smeargle, yes, no. <laughs> Just joined. What's going on here? Fun things. Um, yeah. Lots of fun. Okay. Um, well, do you. Would you like to do Bolt Strike? Or is this. Or is this enough? And we'll see if he wants to continue to do testing or not. If it is enough, then I will go ahead and stop the stream for tonight. Because I don't feel like testing anything else. This is interesting enough. That's got my attention. <laughs> oh no, I think it was a mistake. Oh. Yeah. Sometimes when uh, getting your Pokemon ready for these uh, big tests like that, it can be difficult to make sure you've got everything right straight away. Um, like, you'll line up what you want with your, um, like, if you, if you prepare, like, I usually prepare my stuff ahead of time in uh, Showdown, and then, like, I compare it when I uh, prepare the Pokemon in-game um, to make sure that that's right. Um, but... Uh, sometimes you, you just overlook it, or you forget, or you're just like, oh, I just need a random Z like, I just need this random Pokemon, it doesn't matter what it has, and you're just like, oh, well, I actually needed it to have this, and like, oh, well, I actually needed it to have this. Um, so, I'm guessing, I don't, I don't, I don't know if this is a yes or no. Uh, down to Yeah, Bolt Strike has a little more variance to it. 260 charged Bolt Strike was supposed to barely overflow. 200 charged Fusion Bolt doesn't. Next planned mechanic video, if at all, um, there would be one on speed. Um, Brax TYY. I actually have one. Uh, I had one on speed prepared for a while, but um, yeah, something something college. <laughs> So it's coming along there. Have you have you tried doing tests just above lower powers of two, just as such as just over six five 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 three five damage? Well, we could do that, um, but we should be able to um, since that did exactly seventy four damage. We should be able to figure out. Um, can talk test or in single play? Yeah, it would be. I can't imagine it would be actually sixty five thousand though. Sixty five thousand seems too low. I mean, I suppose it wouldn't need to be that high, to be fair. We just know that it did at least some di something mod, uh, whatever, and that gave it 74, so... Or something mod 74 and that gives whatever. Because we know it did actually an actual 74 damage. So if we can calculate what we expect the damage to be, then we we should be able to figure out pretty reasonably. Yeah, it, it would depend. So you're gonna have a light that burns the sky to zero to one damage. <laughs> no. Yes. And so we wouldn't want that. Oh, I see I see what you're saying. Because um, if it overflowed then, then that would be um, too high.
So what's interesting to me is that when the guys did uh, data mining for this um, in Gen 5, they never made um, a mention of something like uh, the limit on their modifiers. And if you click on that uh, link that I set up earlier, um, oh, that's actually quite a ways up. Let's see if I can send that again. So the, the, the guys um, here, they never mentioned a specific uh, cap. No, I didn't actually read the, um, I'm, not, I'm not good at disassembly, so I wouldn't be able to check to see if they, um, what, what they think the damage uh, cap's at. But I, I would have thought that that would have been mentioned at some point. I do know that when they uh, apply modifiers, um, they use a 16-bit um, factor to, 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 to test it by, but... Which I believe max size of uh, a 16-bit number would be what? To the 16 minus 1. That would also be that 65553. Actually, you know what? I feel like it definitely... Fabric says at one point register would hold two or three. Alright, see. Yay, Sadistic Mystic did his math. <laughs> he knows what he's doing here. Um, I'm not sure if you uh, know this, Sadistic Mystic, but Team Rocket Elite was, um, in my opinion, uh, one of the first Battle Mechanics researchers. Uh, like, uh, pretty active back in the day, like, way back in the day. I remember um, reading some of his old posts on Smogon, like, back in 2011. Um, he did some work in VGC stuff. Um, I believe it was um, uh, Team Rocket Elite. Were you the one who um, did testing with live competition, or was that Kafotics who did that? I know Kafotics did some work with it, but I, I thought you did some as well. Maybe back in Gen 4, it's not nearly as detailed as modern stuff. Yeah, don't sell yourself short. I thought you did. Which part of life? I know. I know you did something with it. Uh, it, it um, it comes to mind. I recall. Um, I remember. I uh, I asked for a source. I think on one time at Nugget Bridge, about something. Tested tiebreaker mechanics. Tiebreaker mechanics. That's right. Yeah. Because oh, that's right. That's right. Because remember we were talking about um. Like the um, the official document didn't have the actual formula for the games used because we didn't know that they were using the total um, HP. I remember that because there was some uh, random regional battle that ended in that way, and we thought it was all confusing, and so um, that was cited and figured out. It's always nice when Pokemon doesn't give you information. You have to figure it out yourself. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to do the same thing here, but with Bolt Strike now. World Championship rules. <laughs> Unfortunately, this would never come up at Worlds. I, I'd always love for something to, like, break at Worlds. Not because, like, <laughs> it would be good, but I think it would just be really funny. Like, we had a double game freeze in finals or something like that. Like, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be good, but it would be funny or ironic. There's another, um, some Portuguese players sent me, um, more reports of uh, double game freezes, um, occurring. I, I still get reports of double game freezes, um, and so I need to go through and review that and see if I can replicate it. Um, it was something to do with, I think, tech rage and something fainting, so I'll have to look into it. I haven't done too much research ever since the 1.2 patch. Like, uh, not like it actually fixed it, it just... <laughs> Fix the biggest one, because they, um, apparently the reason for the game freezes in the first place was because of, um, a misspelled function call, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> Alright. So let's do this one more time. Hopefully this time with 99% more old strike o -coing. Or hopefully this time 99% more bolt strike not oko I suppose. Uh, we'd prefer it not to oko. 
so you could have a consistent test there with um, sadistic mystics math. Is gravity on Finny legal? I just I just now realized that. I don't know if it is. Learn Finny gravity. Of course it can. <laughs> Finny is broken. <laughs> it gets all the good moves. Like the fact that Finny gets icy wind, I think, is something that's just so underexplored. Because the calm mindset is really good, but. I, I think Icy Wind Finny is way better than uh, people respect it for. So let's see here. Next up, we want to try to take the huge power away from the Zoom World coming in. Swiggy D swags, like D swig. Lego would be proud. Okay. Pass the huge power to the Pikachu. actual stats updated in the game. Like, if you could um, test um, exactly the, uh, like, if you could see the actual stats of your Pokemon, um, like, maybe on the bottom screen, but also potentially in the summary screen or, or something, it would be nice. So you could see, like, actual damage, or actual stat for guard split or for power split or things like that. At the moment, you just have to kind of infer it. Or not infer it, but calculate it. Swiggity swag. Yeah, I guess it was just That's that's actually definitely right. <laughs> that's yeah, that would be that could be pretty bad. You can technically do the same with um, some er some other certain uh, like you can do it with like pain split in theory, which is why it's always really frustrating how a showdown doesn't show how much HP you actually recovered from pain split. Um, or other moves like that. Like, it doesn't show how much HP you recover from Leech Seed, so you can't reverse engineer HP stats in that way. Another reason why I don't, uh, if I can help it, I try to play my serious matches on cart. Um, that's neither here nor there, so let's see what I do need to do next. I need to Will Wisp and Reflect type.
Hey guys, Fufuf2 here, and I'm here today bringing you another video on something cool. Fufu2 Fufu always uses, or Fufu2, however you say his name, um, always uses this music. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good Glitch X City music, but. Oh, come on! <laughs> it dodged! <sighs> well, looks like we have to do that again. Strength Steps is one move that does reveal an opponent's raw stat, providing you're missing enough HP to hold it all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Strength Step would be a really good move. Uh, imagine if a move just got Strength Step. Give a good Pokemon that move. Ooh. Like, if a Moogus got String Sap, I, th I think people, VGC players don't know how that works, I'll tell you that much. The move's broken. You can just, like, attack a Landorus and heal your entire health. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's, that's huge. It's like a free rest in some cases. Because it's like to reverse engineer EV spreads mid battle. Oh, you know what? When I do, um, when you do, like, uh, ditto scouting and, um, what's it called? When you do ditto, actually, you know what? Do I need the black sludge on Smeargle? Because I feel like it hasn't done anything. I want to take that off. Can I take off black sludge? Because I feel like we don't need black sludge. And that, all it's doing is wasting animation time. I haven't seen it impact uh, a game yet. If you want, it's calibrated to leave exactly one HP at the end. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we need it. Oh shoot! I didn't want to remove the whole thing. Oops. Held item. All right. Yeah. Just saves. Yeah, we'll do that. I'm kind of sick of seeing it. <laughs> the black sludge thing tick down. That'll speed it up slightly a bit. <laughs> You're rooting for me. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Um, I don't. I don't know about this one. Uh, you, what you should be rooting for is that the um, Mew survives. That's what you should be rooting for. Uh, what do I lead again? I forget. Uh, it's Poopa Smeargle. Hey guys, did you know that uh, Pokemon is scripted? I have the script right here. Twenty sixteen, uh, top eight US nationals. The guy came over to me and said, Hey, I hope you know that uh Chase is winning this event. And I said, Oh. Yay. Pikachu Tapu Fini. You know, I feel like that could be like some makeshift <laughs> lead in like 2017 or something like that. Like a makeshift Manectric, uh, <laughs> a makeshift Manectric, uh, Fini lead. Be funny. <laughs> Alright. Power split in the Swiggy Swag. Gravity. You don't understand the gravity of these tests. On the plus side, I now no longer have to look at the script for the first few turns because we've done them so many times. <laughs> Alright. Skill swap le tapu fini.
Hey, there we go. There's that crit. Get that crit out of the way. It's still so bizarre to me. Um, did I mess up? No, I didn't mess up. Um, let me make sure. Yeah, I didn't mess up. Not just one. Look at how big and strong Pikachu is with his huge power. What do you think the thumbnail for this video should be? Anyone have any suggestions? Probably just Pikachu doing something strong. Bolt Strike looks more impressive than uh, Power Trip, so I'll probably just choose that. All right. So who poop raised the roof has fainted next in is Mimikyu. My name is Mimikyu, and I'm no more than two. As you out. In goes the Finny. Hello, Finny. Alright guys, what do you predict will go wrong this time? There's a couple things that can go wrong. Hopefully none of those happen though. Well, the rollout actually hits the Mimikyu this time, so that's good. Transforming. Yep. No critical hit, that's always nice. Strike. Next up. Put the speed swap. <laughs> I was supposed to take over ten million damage. And all I got was this lousy poo poo. <laughs> Oh, that's a good one. That's pretty funny. I apologize if that was a late reaction. I was uh, re reading the script intensely. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Alright. What am I doing now? 
Double instruct launcher. Can, um, can Smeargle sketch chatter in this generation? I can't recall if it can now or not. Um, I think it got lifted. I, I know the band was still on there for a while, but I'm not sure if it got lifted yet or not. Hope he is trivia is outdated, yes. I mean, this, to be fair, this was discovered like three or four days ago, so. Now we set up for the final turn. So this Pikachu having been boosted with charge, huge power, um, like a lot of stuff. Let's see what's all uh, been boosted by on the bottom screen. Let's see if it tells us. Oh, it doesn't even tell us all that much. It's just plus six and all that stuff. Yeah, how boring. Okay, well in any case, now we're going to go for an instruct with our Mew Smeargle onto the Cherum. And hopefully there is no critical hit. That would be ideal. So now I go for a speed swap onto the Mew again. All right, so we got two helping hands. Let's see here. Bolt strike. It hits. Okay, good. Ah, uh, let's see here. Big boy damage. It did not Oko. Woohoo! Excellent. All right, so that did exactly 404. Uh, 404, uh, 10 billion damage not found. Uh, minus 57, and we got 347 damage there, Sadistic Mystic. So that was 347. Sorry, I wasn't that ex excited for this one. Uh, the first one was much more exciting since it was novel. But, um, so now we've got 347 on this one, and we got 74 on that other one. So, we'll just have to run the math, um, check the damage rolls, and see how they all line up. That should be all. Okay, awesome. I'll go ahead and save this battle video as well in case it's needed. Um, that should be good. Excellent. All right. Well, I appreciate everyone who came out and uh, checked out <laughs> with what the heck we were doing here. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Again, um, credit to this discovery goes to somebody. <laughs> it would probably be helpful if I knew who it was. Um, let me see, I, I, I said it at the beginning, but it'd always be nice to, you know, credit the people who originally make discoveries. Because all we're really doing in the end is just piggybacking off the theory. Uh, let's see what the Twitter handle is. 
handle is on there. Uh, Hirata Hiroto. At Hirata Hiroto. So I will link that in the Twitch chat. Very bizarre Twitch uh, profile. Or not Twitch profile, but Twitter profile. And yeah, they're, they're the one who discovered it, so therefore they are cool. So we should be finished right here. And you're welcome, um, Jimmy. That was um, fun. It's always fun to uh, learn new data, even if we didn't get anything exciting. But it's still a little bit good to, you know, have a better understanding of it. And now uh, that's good. So I'll go ahead and stop the stream so um, that the footage can be reviewed and analyzed. So thanks everyone for coming out.